All right, we want to look at the region now in the first quadrant enclosed by the y-axis and the graph of y equals x cosine x and y equals, or just y equals cosine x and y equals sine x. We want to revolve that around the x-axis to form a solid. So I've got down here a graph of what that looks like in the first quadrant. And we're looking at now, oh, that shade, that color is really close. Uh, we want to look at, let's see here. We want to look at, not banana, tangerine. If we take this part in here and rotate it around the x-axis, notice that we, we're we going to have a space in the middle. So, you know, we would have our blue line would look like this. Our green line would look like this. And notice when we rotate that around, what's going to end up with in there is some space in the middle where we have nothing. Okay. And then we've got this outer ring where we have everything. And, and notice the shape we get on this is a washer. We're hollow here in the middle. We're hollow. There's nothing in this space. We're filled in on the edges because that's the area that's in between those two curves, and we want to find the volume of this shape. Now, this is a hard shape to visualize. It's hard to draw. It's hard to get a good look at, but um, you can find online, if you type in 3D washer, uh, you can get some good looks at what this would look like. So what we need to do is figure out the outer radius, that's the big R, and the inner radius, that's the little R, and we're going to take the outer radius squared, minus the inner radius squared times pi, okay? Now, that gets us the area of the cross section. Please know that this does not equal this, okay? If, if, you, if you attempt a washer problem this way, you are gonna be doomed from the start, okay? Notice that that it's, it's big R squared minus little r squared inside the parentheses, okay? So what we have to do is figure out where these two guys cross. We need this point of intersection right here, okay? Which should be the same exact point. If you remember your first quadrant trig, we know that this is going to be the point pi over four because that's where the uh, x and y coordinates are the same for sine and cosine. If you don't remember, you can use your calculator to help you out, or you can use a trigonometric uh, sheet or find a unit circle with all the labels on it. So what we want to know is we want to know the area from 0 to pi over 4. So that's how our uh, integral will set up from 0 to pi over 4. Okay. Again, pi can go on the outside because it's a constant, so we'll put pi out here. And then times the outer radius. Well, what's my upper function here in blue? Which of those two trig functions goes through the point 1 at 0? And that's going to be cosine. So I have cosine squared x minus the one that goes through 0, this light, lighter green one. It's going to be sine squared x dx. Okay, and and that's the that's the setup uh, for this guy. Now, if you're in my class, you have totally have permission to punch this into your calculator and get a decimal answer. I've already graded you on integration. If you're not in my class and you need to integrate this, integrating this from here is pretty difficult. So what we want to do is we want to use a trigonometric identity, which says that cosine squared x minus sine squared x is equal to the cosine of two x. So you've seen this trigonometric identity somewhere before. Um, now, you may or may not remember this, but if we let u equal 2x, du would be equal to 2dx. So 1 half du equals dx. We would have to make a u substitution. And when we do that, uh, we're going to have a substitution. It's going to look like pi from 0 to pi over 4 of one half cosine u du okay so when you integrate this when you integrate this and substitute back in 
you're going to wind up with pi over 2 okay, times the sine of 2u or sine of 2x and we're going to evaluate that from 0 to pi over 4 okay so substitute your 0 and your, your stop minus your start you substitute all of this in I'm starting to get squeezed on room so I'm going to have pi over 2 times the sine of 2 times pi over 4 that's pi over 2 2 times I'll, Let's see here, 2 times pi over 4, okay, the 2 and the 4 cancel, that leaves me pi over 2, minus pi over 2 times the sine of 0, okay? So the sine at pi over 2 is 1, so that's going to be pi over 2 times 1 minus pi over 2 times the sine of 0 is 0. And so for this particular guy, we're going to get pi over 2 units cubed all right and that's using your washers so washers are going to be an outer ring minus an inner ring okay the volume of a circular cross section is just going to be the area of the circle pi r squared integrated from our start to our stop all right so they're very very closely related don't let these be super challenging but sometimes you're going to have to pay attention to figure out which graph is the larger radius and which graph is the smaller radius.